And now, the President of the International Olympic Committee. The decision is... Lily Hammer. The decision is Lillehammer. Those four famous words spoken by the IOC President Juan Antonio Samarag would turn out to have enormous consequences for the picturesque Norwegian village by the shores of the beautiful Lake Mjö... 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 By the shores of the beautiful lake Lillehammer is a small town. In fact, it's so small that in many of the houses, the first floor is on the ground floor and the main entrance and the back door are one and the same. The name Lillehammer literally means little hammer and the inhabitants are usually known as little hammeroids. But let's go back just a few years to a time when Lillehammer had about 340 inhabitants divided into men women and peasants. In those days the town was an economic backwater. Tourism was dead and the highway ran on the other side of the beautiful Lake Mjol, the beautiful lake. Unemployment was rampant. Today we only have one job and that is as a hairdresser. Okay, you... Oh, I almost forgot. We'll also be needing a brain surgeon. <laughs> you, okay. Hmm? Yes. Well, the rest of you, goodbye. An air of depression lay heavily over the inhabitants of Lillehammer, with the exception of the local hunter and fisherman, Mr. Hansen, who was a man of the old school and quite satisfied with things the way they were. <laughs> For some incomprehensible reason or other, this tiny town was awarded the gigantic and costly task of mounting the 1994 Winter Olympic Games. How could it happen? To this day, there are even some who claim that it never did. However, most experts agree that the Olympic adventure at Lillehammer started 13 years earlier, on the 12th of October 1981, as a worried Board of Commerce was convened for an important meeting. Me too. Me too. I'm out too. Mm, me too. We, we, we got to get this town back in business. Easy for you to say. No, it, it isn't.
the idea had been conceived. But would it be possible to persuade the politicians? The answer came at a press conference shortly afterwards. As mayor, I am proud to announce that the town council will actively participate in bringing the Winter Olympics to Lillehammer. But uh, isn't Lillehammer too small to be burdened with such enormous and costly undertaking as the Olympic Games? As you know, politics is the art of the possible. It's only a question of uh, pulling the right strings. So we haven't been under any sort of pressure concerning this uh, decision then? Isn't it typical that this sort of allegation always show up? On the contrary, this decision was based purely on idealistic motivation. And I am really hurt when, when you journalists question our integrity as politicians. And wholeheartedly supported by the people, Lillehammer decided to go ahead and apply for the 1992 Winter Olympics. Before a decision could be made, each of the applicant countries had to present their plans to the IOC in Lausanne. Herr meine Herren, darf ich Ihnen zeigen, was die Innsbruck für Olympische Winterspiele Ihnen sofort tanken mögen dürfen? Wer sehr gut haben. Hier haben wir hier ein Buff Buff Eisenbahn mit Hotel, Restaurant, Bar, Nightclub, Nightclub Bar, Sport und Bar und Nightclub Innsbruck können Ihnen zeigen die ganze Olympische Bewegung Rauter Banke. Not bad, but where are the Olympic arenas? Yeah. Ah. Breit getragen, meine Herren. Auch für den Deutschen Olympiakonkurrent Herrenfeld. Where is the Bobsleigh? Ah, the Bobsleigh? A frozen from the start here. Ein Brennter Fusion geht 100 Kilometer von der Kurve breit zu bereitigen, kreitert der Tazile. Yes, but uh, where is the downhill? At Donny, baut er eine Werse Zeit an der Vorderspiel von Heil C3, auf Rout, Jumpe, Seinte von Kurve zu zielen lassen. Thank you. Prost für den Tinder Ross, wir rutschen durch die Rade in Asa. Then came Lillehammer's turn. Uh, the, uh, welcome to Lillehammer. Uh, we have the, the Olympic uh, the, for 1992. And here we have uh, uh, the blue. It's more like the skating, you know, and, and for ice hockey and, and, uh, and figure. And here we have uh, the ski, the snow, the, snow, the uh, ski, uh, the elevated thing for the uh, and down here. And here the uh, and tail mark uh, down for the ski, the jump, jump, jump. And uh, oh, here very, very famous uh, the Ulvang, very fast uh, for the ski running. And how, how much? No, 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 no. no here, here, Lillehammer for Olympic 90, winter 290. And, and, oh, I forget, we have also, um, we must light the um, Olympic candle because it's very, um, very nice. And uh, you, you, hello? Bonjour, monsieur, s'il vous plaît. Venez par ici, s'il vous plaît. Ah, ah, ah. Alors, très bien, ça. Voir ici. Messieurs, here is the French suggestion for the Olympic Winter Games. Attention. Voilà. Oh, bien. This is exactly what we are looking for. Mm -hmm. I think we know what the decision will be. And the music was very nice too. Ah, As we all know, Albert Wiel got the games in 1992. But Lillehammer didn't give up. They applied again. And this time, they knew that they would need to present far stronger arguments. When the IOC arrived a while later on a survey tour of Lillehammer, no effort was spared. The committee was met by the peak of Norwegian hospitality. Traditional drink was served, the famous Norwegian homemade schnapps. This time, 
Lillehammer could present arguments like compact games, all the venues within an area of 200 by 200 meters. No smoking zones on the slalom slopes, excellent parking facilities, All the IOC members to receive the Lillehammer Town Key, which incidentally also fits the door of the Olympic Hostess's dormitory. And in addition, Lillehammer offers to enter Norway into the European Union without a referendum. was an exciting time for the inhabitants of Lillehammer. Would the IOC award the Olympics to Lillehammer this time? Would the IOC in fact remember that they'd ever been to Lillehammer? On this particular evening, the evening of September the 15th, 1988, all the little hammeroids are glued to their sets, except for one. Mr. Hansen is out hunting as usual. But the tension among the local Board of Commerce was growing by the second. Simultaneously, or slightly earlier due to the time difference, there was unusually hectic activity in the IOC official secret decision room. Well, gentlemen, then we all agree on the decision. Um, yes, uh, I say, what, what, what... Lord Senile. Yes, uh, I say, um, what, what, what about Sweden, and, uh, Your Excellency? Hey, 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 what's, what's going on here? Hello, hello, um, hey, hey. Anyone else? Lord Geriatric. It's uh Morning, Morning. It's uh hey. That's uh, an excellent an excellent decision you're on, yes. And now, the President of the International Olympic Committee. Here he comes! The decision is... Lily Hammer. Yeah! And once the decision was made, the Lily Hammeroids were not to be stopped. The wheels started turning. Money was no longer a problem. The government guaranteed and business expanded as never before. A tremendous... Demolishing and building activity commenced. And soon the first of the Olympic installations was in place. The ski jump with the centrally placed Olympic flame. Naturally, some problems did arise along the way, but none that couldn't be remedied by a bit of common sense and by exceeding the budget. But of course, old buildings had to go to make room for new ones. And 
here, as previously in other parts of the world, we see that it's possible for the little man to stop the giant, at least for a short while. Hello, old friend. Um, unfortunately, your house is obstructing the construction of some of the new Olympic installations. In exchange, we are willing to offer you a new property and um, and one million dollars for a new beautiful house. What do you say? No! I am your king. I command you to move. No! Oh, you can come and live in my house. I have 250 rooms and a kitchen. No! This is a better illustration of modern monarchy than of the atmosphere in Lillehammer at the time. But despite certain trivial problems, the Olympic town grew with a new and audacious architecture. Nevertheless, most things went according to plan, and soon the opening of the Winter Olympic Games was looming on the horizon. Leaders and official representatives were beginning to arrive in the Olympic town, and from now on, security became vitally important. An elite security corps had been established, and a simple but effective password system was set in motion. And the password was... Good morning. Good afternoon. Security against terrorism was one thing. The participants' safety in and around the different arenas was another. The downhill course, for example, had been secured to prevent spectators from getting out on the track and injuring the skiers. In the same way, the bobsleigh run had been secured so that Bob would feel safe. And finally, on February the 12th, 1994, came the day when Lillehammer's name would be etched into the history of international sports for all posterity. The opening of the 17th Winter Olympic Games. And now, everybody is waiting for the Olympic flame. Brought to Lillehammer from Greece, smuggled into the country over the Swedish border, because as we all know, the importing of naked flame into Norway is strictly prohibited, and here it comes now, the flame, the incarnate symbol of peace and understanding for all mankind. Hello. Hello. But as we remember, the password was good afternoon. But as a precaution against incidents like the one we've just witnessed, the organizing committee naturally had backup copies of both runner and flame, as well as the entire opening ceremony. And finally, the games could commence. All two million tickets had already been sold on a quota basis all over the world, and of those two million tickets, the 340 inhabitants of Lillehammer were allotted one. There were, of course, other ways of catching a glimpse of the games. Oh, it's fantastic! And, of course, the black Tickets. market flourished. Tickets. The fact that many knew how to exploit it. Tickets! Cheaper tickets! 
Very cheap tickets. This way. <laughs> Mounting an Olympic Games is a gigantic task. Two million people were to be transported into the area on boats, trains, and on foot. Some even disguised themselves as reindeer to get in for free. But most of them were quickly spotted and stopped in their tracks. And all of these people had to be quartered and fed. Some were lucky and found rooms in hotels. While others had to make do with simpler forms of lodging. Catering was a problem in itself. Two million mouths were to be fed, an almost impossible task for a town of Lillehammer's size, if it hadn't been for the fact that one day the town's number one cook got a brilliant idea. Hand me two fishes and five loaves. Our Lord Jesus fed 5,000 people that day. He easily calculated that if two fish and five loaves were sufficient to feed 5,000 people, one wouldn't need any more than 800 fish and 2,000 loaves to feed two million. Naturally, that two million didn't include the IOC's representatives who were given special culinary attention. Each night, they were served a new and exotic Norwegian delicacy. Another key word was telecommunications. Every day, the games were followed by thousands of journalists from all over the world. To satisfy their needs, a brand new press center had been built, which had attracted not undue notice far beyond Norway's boundaries. Auf Wiederhosen! The sale of souvenirs was a considerable source of income in the Olympic budget. Say, do you happen to have any more of those cute little uh, souvenir snowballs? Just a minute. Ten dollars. Whoa, oh, hold your horses, boy. Ten bucks, that's a bit too much, isn't it? Oh, well, you must remember it's handmade. Oh, okay. Can you gift wrap it, please? For the Olympic competitors, it was comforting to know that a highly professional emergency medical team was on hand at all times to treat acute injuries. Here, they're trying to locate and remove an ice hockey puck that the Norwegian goalkeeper swallowed, trying to save an extremely hard slap shot from the blue line. Oh yes, here it is. But naturally, the most interesting aspect of the games was the sporting side. And the little hammeroids, having only one ticket among them, showed great interest in the TV transmission. I'm afraid we have to take an X-ray. Yeah. Hold on. Not everyone showed the same interest. Excuse me, may we have our cut, please? No! Alas, all good things come to an end including the 17th Winter Olympic Games at Lillehammer. It all culminated on February the 27th, 1994, 
in an immense closing ceremony in which the theme was inspired by Norwegian culture and history. Here come 400 children from schools nationwide throwing snowballs to the spectators. An amusing little detail is that every snowball contains a genuine granite rock from a different part of Norway which the spectator can take home as a souvenir of the Olympics here. And what's happening now? Yes, now 2,000 white peace chickens are being let loose as a symbol of... of uh, as a symbol. And here comes the world-famous Norwegian actress Liv Ullman riding a Norwegian horse while reading from the collected works of Henrik Ibsen. The horse's name, by the way, is Frank. And, and who is this, then? Uh, it's Norway's great son, Thor Heyerdahl, famous for the Kontiki expedition, among other exploits. Here he is, digging up final evidence that the South American Indians originally came from South America. And here is a representative from the very northern part of Norway demonstrating how tanned you can get solely by means of the midnight sun. And to top it all off, a band of Vikings dressed in exact copies of the costume the old Vikings wore. The interesting detail is that these Vikings are exactly as drunk as the old Vikings were 1,000 years ago. <laughs> And watch this. What on earth? They're, they're puking in unison, in, in complete synchronization. Absolutely fantastic. What, what superb precision. They certainly must have trained a long time to pull that one off. And let's see now. Yes, now they're leaving the arena and rushing in among the audience where, true to their Viking traditions, they're raping and pillaging selected spectators. And now, finally the solemn moment everyone has been waiting for, the extinguishing of the Olympic flame. And suddenly it was all over. Before the Lillehammeroids had gathered their wits, the town was back in the same backwater it had occupied before the Olympic adventure started ten years previously. The only slight difference was that the 340 Lillehammeroids now had a debt of one billion dollars and a town with a room capacity of two million. The tourists were gone, unemployment was more rampant than ever, and the highway once again ran on the other side of the beautiful lake. The beautiful lake. What to do with the Olympic arenas after the games was another problem. Cheap ski jump, ski jump for sale, two for the price of one. For Mr. Hansen, it was no problem. In just ten years then, due to the Olympic fairy tale, Lillehammer was transformed from a picturesque, romantic, rustic little village into a huge, unattractive, lifeless, stony desert, saddled with a gigantic debt. But what actually happened to the old Lillehammer, some may ask? The old Lillehammer is still lying there, just like it was in the old days. Well, that is not there exactly. It was actually purchased by an American film producer and moved to Hollywood, where it's now being used as a set for the film Snow White and the Seven Teenage Mutant Ninja Dwarfs. And action! <laughs> It's a wrap. And that concludes the rise and fall of an Olympic village. Good night. Good afternoon!